here to dive into industry trends with leading ETF experts. This is ETF Spotlight with Nina Mishra. Hello and welcome to ETF Spotlight. I'm your host, Nina Mishra. My guest today is Matt Kaufman, head of ETFs at Calamos. Calamos has over 37 billion in AUM including more than 16 billion in liquid alternative strategies. And uh, they offer these strategies through mutual funds, closed end funds, and some EDS as well. And today we are talking about structured protection ETFs, which basically help you stay invested in the stock markets while providing protection against any downside. Matt, Welcome. Great to have you with us today. Thanks, Nina. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. So you recently launched the Calamos S&P 500 Structured Protection ETF. The ticker symbol is CPSM. Uh, This ETF aims to match the return of the S&P 500 ETF up to a cap and it promises 100% downside protection against any losses, and that is over a one-year outcome period. And uh, you will be launching uh, similar funds uh, in the coming months that track the performance of the NASDAQ 100 index and the Russell 2000 index. So tell us why you decided to launch these structured protection ETFs. Yeah, thanks for that introduction. Um, You're you're right as far as uh, what the structured protection ETFs are designed to do. They're designed to deliver 100% protection over a one-year outcome period and then have upside potential relative to either the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, and then we're also on file with the Russell 2000 um, that will come in July. Um, And so you get that one-year outcome period performance with 100% protection over the outcome period. I know that that headline itself you know, stands out. It feels a little bit like a marketing, you know, type headline, but it is true. If you are able today, I'll just rephrase that, today we're able to construct an options portfolio that delivers strong upside performance relative to one of those underlying benchmarks with 100% protection over that outcome period. And so we decided to launch the structured protection ETFs largely because of the demand from financial advisors and because the interest rate environment that we're in today allows us to deliver these types of products. And so if if we look historically, you know, interest rates have been artificially kept low for, you know, around 15 years or so after the financial crisis, we saw rates go down to, you know, 0% or maybe 50 basis points they were kind of fluctuating, you know, year by year there. And so if you follow a lot of rate driven products like structured products or annuities or even CDs, you know, those products that what I would say is, you know, kind of took a nap during that that time period. And so the value that insurance companies could provide on their fixed index annuities, which provide 100 percent protection or capital protected notes, the upside caps were very low because the rate environment was low. And so it really forced those industries to move into what I would call as a risk sharing model where you can now deliver, you know, instead of 100% protection, you would deliver something less, something partially principally protected, like a 10% buffer on the market or a 20% buffer. And then you could afford to give people meaningful upside relative to a broad market index. And so that space started to take off in the insurance and structured note space in the early 2010s, uh, around 2012, I believe. And um, I was working at an actuarial consulting firm at the time, helping construct a lot of these products. And what we found is that you can deliver that type of an outcome very efficiently using options contracts. You don't necessarily need a balance sheet you know, from a bank or an insurance company to deliver that type of outcome. And so that really uh, gave way and, and sparked this buffered space. There's buffered notes, there's buffered annuities, and now, you know, as of 2017, 2018, there's buffered ETFs, there's buffered UITs and variable annuity subaccounts. There's a lot of registered investment companies that can deliver the same type of outcome, but because it's in a RIC, a registered investment company, 
Now you can deliver that in a very efficient uh, manner. And so, you know, I started uh, at Calamos ahead of the ETF business, um, January of 2023. And as I was, uh, you know, coming into the role here, interest rates were starting to rise. You know, they were coming off of 0%. Uh, we had that lift off of 2022. And, you know, if we follow the flows, we see money going into CDs again. People are, are excited about that 5% interest rate they can get today. People are buying fixed index annuities again. They're buying capital protected structured notes. And that space, the you know capital protected space, is about four times the size of the buffered annuity and note space. And so it's a very large uh, space that has yet to be captured by the ETF vehicle. And it really wasn't captured uh, by the ETF vehicle yet because the rates were too low to do it. And the options markets you know, really had not evolved to the point where we could deliver that. And so all of those things were converging together you know, right around 2024, which allowed for us to now deliver and build a series of exchange-traded funds that delivers this type of exposure, 100% protection, and then the upside to the S&P, which had a cap of about 9.8%. Uh, we're recording this on May 30th, and CPNJ, the NASDAQ 100 version, is set to launch on June 3rd. And we're seeing right now a cap range of around 10% for that product as well. And then in July, we're on file to bring the Russell 2000 version. And generally, the cap rate on the Russell has historically been even higher still of versus those other two. And so now we can deliver, again, this capital protection inside of the ETF wrapper. And it's a space that I think Calamos in particular is really well poised to capture, we've been in the risk management game for 45 years, you know, first doing it with convertibles. We're now one of the largest alternatives managers in the country. Um, and so we've got really strong internal capabilities to be able to deliver these as ETFs into the marketplace. Right. So perfect timing. And I'm looking at the portfolio. You mentioned options contracts. Yes. And it seems that CBSM holds three different uh, types of options contracts. These look like flex options. So could you explain uh, what exactly it is holding and uh, what is the purpose of those option contracts? Sure. Just a quick note on flex options. You know, that's basically a, a fancy term for a customized options contract. So we can go and build, you know, institutional like options contracts. We can decide the underlying. So in this you know, case for June 3rd, we can decide to use the NASDAQ 100 or the ETF QQQ uh, and build options on that. We can specify the strike price. We can specify the style. So there's two styles to options American style which those options contracts can be called away, which you wouldn't want in this sense. You want to own that whole package over the outcome period. So we want European style options, which you know has uh, really nothing to do with the geography of the name, but more so the, the way that they can be called away or not. So European style options just simply cannot be called away during the holding period. And so it gives you that point to point exposure. And so we use flex options in order to construct that options portfolio. And then a, a simple way to think about those options legs is to think of it in three layers. <clears throat> and so Nina, we would you know, use an example of if, if I gave you $100, we could reconstruct this options portfolio. So the first leg is going to be your most expensive layer. It's your exposure layer. So if we just use the S&P 500 as an example, I'm going to buy uh, a near uh, zero strike call or a deep in the money call on the S&P 500. And that might cost you around $98. And so that'll give you the full upside participation and downside participation uh, minus the dividend yield. So that's why it costs about $98. Uh, an important note there is you don't lose the dividend yield. It basically gets applied to your capital appreciation potential. And so we've spent $98 on our deep in the money call. Our next layer is the protection layer. And so we're going to buy an at the money put option to get your 100% prote downside protection over that one year. And that layer will cost you around $4. And so if you've been following along, uh, for those listening, we had $100, we've spent 98 on your exposure, we spent $4 on your protection, 
And so we've we've busted your budget. We've spent one hundred and two dollars. And so the way to bring that back to one hundred is to sell off some of your upside exposure to the tune of collecting two dollars to do that. So we're going to sell off enough upside to collect two dollars in order to pay for that protection. And so however much we have to sell off will ultimately be determined by the strike price of that out of the money call. And so that is how we determine the cap. And so you put all three layers together and you get a $100 or a fully financed options package that will deliver capital protection over that one year outcome period. And then you have the upside to one of those indexes uh, to a cap. And so that options package you know, is struck on the first day and then it operates and trades through time and so for folks who buy in, you know, toward the beginning, they can get that 100% protection level. And then there's plenty of opportunities along the way. So our, our CPSM, our S&P 500 ETF launched May 1st. And today, if you had bought that, and the market's closed now, uh, you know, while we're talking here, you could have gotten a 98% protection level and about an 8% upside cap because the S&P had run up a little bit. And so, you know, you can see that there's still significant protection you know, all along the way and entry points for people. And we saw, you know, even people buying in today. And then I would note any time that that NAV of the ETF is moving around, but crosses back over its starting price, then that allows you to still get that 100% protection and the same upside cap as when you started, but over a much shorter time period. And so that really gives people a lot of opportunities uh, to buy these products all along the way. You don't just have to buy on the first day in order to obtain that. That's good to know because this product launched uh, in the beginning of May. And so some investors may be wondering whether they should wait for the next uh, product or they should just go ahead and invest in this product. So they can go to your website and learn more about their outcome if they invest now, correct? Yeah, the the right thing to do would be to go to calamos.com you can click on one of the ticker symbols for a structured protection ETF that we have in the market, and it will tell you three main terms or three main data points that you will want to know. Your upside potential, how much downside risk you might have, and then how many days that you need to hold in order to obtain that outcome profile. And you can know all of that before you even invest your money. And so there are very few investments that can actually tell you your profile before you invest. A lot of the equity investments, you're investing your money and you're you know, at the whims and mercy of the market. You don't know what it's going to do in a year. And here, it can tell you your parameters that you're going to be invested in. So it allows for a lot more certainty in the market. And in this case, you know, up to 100% protection against that uh, market drawdown. Great. Uh, so you mentioned the options. Uh, so it's the strategy basically involves buying call options to gain exposure to the S&P 500 index and then put options for downside protection and then offsetting the cost by selling call options, which yeah. in turn will cap upside returns. So it appears that investors can create this strategy themselves by buying a, a set of these options. So what is the advantage of using this ETF wrapper? Are there any tax advantages or any cost advantages associated with using the ETF wrapper? Yes, yeah, so I think we can we can address that in two points. The first one is you know we we've heard similar is you know a lot of uh, folks might say well, I can create this you know similarly myself and the answer is you can get close but you can't get it as precise and you can't do it in the tax efficient way that we can by using the exchange traded fund wrapper and by using flex options and so if you were to try to create this on your own you could go out and use you know listed equity options maybe on SPY or QQQ uh, but if you go out one year or further it may be difficult to get those exact strike prices that you need in order to deliver the 100% protection that you're looking for over that one year time period. And then we use flex options for a number of reasons, but one of the biggest reasons, and I'll try not to dive too deep into the weeds here, is equity options can grow and are treated as capital appreciation from a tax perspective, but they are all American style. And so if you tried to create this on your own using equity options, those are American style. And so one of those legs could get called away and that would break the outcome that you were trying to create for yourself. 
Now, the flip side of that is index options, which are European style, but have worse tax treatment. They are 60-40, and those which are 60% long-term, 40% short-term, and that um, options uh, contract marks to market in October. And so what you would need to do, and the reason we use Flex, is we want the equity style option, but we want the style of the index option. We want European style. And the only way to flip that trade, the only way to get equity options that are European style is to use the flex options market to do that. And when we do that, we can now build a portfolio of equity options that are European style and allow that portfolio to grow and compound in a tax deferred way so that your money will grow tax deferred inside the ETF. And even when those options expire, we just roll into a new set of options. You'll get a brand new upside cap, a new 100% protection level, and that money will stay inside the ETF. The ETF itself won't close. And so if you've held for longer than a year, whenever you go to sell that ETF, you'll pay long-term capital gains rates. And so you compare that to any other capital protected product in the insurance space and the note space, a CD, you know, all of those have structured maturities. You might pay phantom income along the way, but then you certainly at the end, that product will expire and you'll pay ordinary income tax on those products. And so there's a big tax advantage to owning capital protection and capital protected growth through the ETF wrapper. Wonderful. That's the beauty of the EDF wrapper that we often talk about. So we know that there's no free lunch, particularly not in investing. So what do investors give up in return for this downside protection in addition to the cap? So if the stock market is going up, uh, investors will get the return only up to that cap. In addition to that, do they give up anything? No, yeah, you answered answered the question. That's it. So the the no free lunch part is that we sell off enough upside in order to fund the protection level. And so you will be capped out um, if you were to hold over the annual outcome period. And let's say your cap is 10%. If the NASDAQ 100 goes up by 20% by the end of that outcome period, you will have captured 10% of that you know, gross of our 69 basis point fee. And then if the market's down, your NAV will be flat. You'll be down zero. Again, that's gross of the 69 basis point fee. So the, your your cost of your protection in that case would be 69 basis points. So that is the that is how the product is constructed. And that's the cost along the way of the product. Um, as you were talking about the beauty of the ETF wrapper, liquidity is one of those you know uh, beauty points, I guess we could call it, where if the market has gone up and maybe the ETF has gone up, let's say 6 7%, you know, if you're in a qualified account, or even if you if you're not concerned about the tax, the long, the short term tax uh, hit, then we see people buying and selling these all along the way. Maybe they they like the idea that they could capture seven percent, you know, step up their cost basis, and then move into a new outcome period. You know, maybe even another uh, protection based ETF and reset their cost basis and continue you know on their upside capture journey. And so we see people buying in toward the beginning holding for the outcome period. Uh, and then we also see people buying in along the way, buying and selling, moving around. We see a lot of volume in between ETF series of folks that are that are doing exactly what I, what I just alluded to. So you mentioned this capital protection space earlier, and uh, you alluded to products like annuities, CDs, et cetera. And uh, you also mentioned unfavorable tax treatment that these products come with. Uh, so could you talk a little bit more about these products like uh, fixed indexed annuities and uh, market link CDs, et cetera, that provide any protection against the downside? Uh, my sure. understanding is that they usually charge much higher fee and they have high investment minimums, lockup periods, et cetera. Uh, could you explain the advantages of the ETF versus those products? Yeah, and uh, yeah, just to make a note, you know, Calmos is not anti, you know, insurance products or or structured products, but I, I do think that the ETF wrapper, given its efficiency, you know, allows us to deliver, you know, the the profiles that you can get through structured products and some annuities, and do it in a very efficient wrapper. And so, you know, you know, to that point, you look at those other other wrappers, and they generally are taxed 
as ordinary income. They might grow tax deferred, but then you're paying ordinary income rates on the exit. And you know, as you said, a lot of those uh, products are term products over several years. So you might be able to get into a fixed indexed annuity, which delivers 100% protection and the upside you know, to a market. But you may have to stay in that product for a considerable amount of time. Um, and then if you do want to get out, sometimes there is a little bit of liquidity there, but the price that you get is not necessarily going to be the value of those underlying options because your money is being you know, put to work through an over-the-counter options package or in some other way. And so we see the delivery of this inside the ETF wrapper to be a very efficient approach. Um, one, one thing that we point to is a more anecdote, but you know, there's a, a great um, organization, or I'd say coalition, doing a lot of research on, on retirement and retirement income, retirement security. Uh, it's called the Alliance for Lifetime Income. I was fortunate to be a part of that, and they're doing a lot of great work in the retirement space. You know, one of the things that we saw by doing a lot of the the surveys and research with investors is they loved the idea of what the insurance products and annuities provided. They loved the idea of protected growth or protected income. And so, what they were struggling with was how it was delivered. You know, in a illiquid wrapper or in a wrapper where the fees were were not so transparent, and so it was difficult to assess if the value that they were getting was was good. And so, what we've done with the structured protection ETFs is we lifted out you know that value proposition of a lot of those insurance and structured products and delivered it inside of the really efficient ETF wrapper. And so, I think that combining two of those features, the things that investors were really looking for and retirees were looking for with the tax efficiency of the ETF, I think has created a powerful combination. And we've seen that just in uh, you know, like positivity scores and, re- and media scores that we can see based off of the product launches that we've had. And so if you look at a lot of insurance products, <clears throat> you know, media scores, you know, they've, they've started to come up as people are in retirement and, and benefiting from the value of annuities. I've seen scores, you know, as low as 60% several years ago, and maybe closer to in the 70s uh, percents now. When we launched the Calamo Structured Protection ETFs, we were seeing scores come back in the 99 percentile. And so we're seeing that almost 100% of people that are interacting with the Structured Protection ETFs are finding value there. They're finding a benefit from owning those types of products. So are these products uh, mainly targeted at retirees? Are they suitable for uh, people who are either nearing retirement or already in retirement? Because we know that generally stocks tend to go up over the long term. So if investors have a long-term investment horizon, probably they should just ignore the short-term noise and stay invested in the stock market. Like just for an example, uh, since its inception in January of 1993, SPY ETF has returned about 10.3% analyzed. And obviously, by seeking some downside protection, investors do forego any potential upside beyond the cap. But we know that there are many risk-averse investors, and particularly, as I mentioned, that those who are either already in retirement or nearing retirement, and they have been just reluctant to invest in stocks, particularly after 2022's brutal stock market uh, performance. We know that there's tremendous amount of cash sitting on the sidelines, about $6 trillion in money mark, more than that in money market funds. And recently, like last year and this year as well, uh, we are at the end of May and uh, stocks have gone so much so soon that many investors are just worried whether this party can continue or not. So tell us who should actually use these uh, protection products. Yeah, that's that's a great question. appreciate that. And I heard you say that the average return of the S&P 500 has been around 10.3%. The cap rate on CPSM is near 10%. And so right now, right, right. because where rates are at, you can get roughly the average return of the S&P 500 as upside opportunity with taking on none of the downside risk. So I think just from a, a one-year trade perspective, that's a tremendous opportunity. Um, and then as far as like who these are for, you, you know, you're right. If you are younger and an accumulating investor, 
time in the market is going to be important. You can, you know, almost ignore volatility. It's not going to impact you. In fact, it could help you in some ways. Um, but as you age, as you approach retirement, you know, there's a, a, a stat also, um, I think from the Alliance from Lifetime Income, I'm going back to the retiree perspective, you know, we're reaching this, uh, you know, idea of peak 65, which means, you know, that over the next few years, we're seeing about 11,000 people per day enter retirement. It's the largest cohort of new retirees in, in American history. Um, and so if you, if you look at all of those folks who are entering into retirement or, you know, maybe they're within eight to 10 years of retirement, it's around 100 million Americans. And this group faces a tremendous challenge of providing for themselves when they no longer work. And the way that you can address that retirement challenge is basically through addressing the three main financial risks that are facing them. There's longevity risk, you know, with people living longer, their retirement savings must, must stretch further. There's inflation risk, which people really ignored over the last 15 years because it wasn't a problem. But now prices for goods and services are rising. Purchasing power is tending to fall. And so retirees really need to outpace inflation to maintain that same standard of living. And then volatility is the third one. Um, you know, there's an acronym. You could put all these three things together. If you're you know, an advisor meeting with your client, just live, L-I-V, longevity, inflation, volatility. So on volatility, like I said, if you're younger, you can afford that. But if you're older and nearing retirement, the volatility in the market can pose a real threat to your portfolio, especially if you're withdrawing from that portfolio and it takes a severe market hit that can put your portfolio savings on a real um, you know, path to declining there. So the structured protection ETFs can solve that problem. They can solve all three of those problems. Frankly, you've got very low volatility. It's in the low single digits. You can outpace inflation over time because you're tied to the markets. And because you're tied to the markets, you can outpace your spending and providing longevity uh, protection to your overall portfolio. So that's for like, for an application from per a person perspective, then there's kind of two sides of the same coin from a um, investment perspective. We see people moving cash into these types of products. You know, the idea would be instead of a CD and getting your 5% guaranteed, which turns into 3% after taxes, your opportunity would be to turn in that 3%, tie your cash to the equity markets and get the upside of up to 10% with 100% protection over that outcome period. And you know, your trade-off is the opportunity cost. If the market doesn't go up by 10% or maybe it goes up by 2%, then you would have been better off buying that CD. But the opportunity to earn 10% and being able to compound that growth over time is a trade-off people are starting to make and finding value there. And the other side of that coin is to de-risk equity exposure. You know, we see markets near all-time highs. And so a lot of advisors are starting to put protection into their portfolios and they can do it by just allocating a percentage. You don't have to do 100%, just putting a percentage into the structured protection ETFs. So to give you an example, if you, you wanted to get 50% downside risk management, you would put 50% into, let's say, CPNJ, the NASDAQ series. And that will give you at a portfolio level, 50% downside risk management. But then your upside, your 0 to 10% upside over the year remains intact. You'll still get 100% of all of that growth. And then above that 10% cap, you're getting 50% of that upside move. And so we're seeing a lot of folks use these for risk management purposes as well. So there's two sides of, of that coin there. Excellent stuff. So do you recommend that uh, advisors should look at the risk uh, tolerance and investment horizon of the investors before deciding how much to allocate to these protection ETFs? I think that's a wise approach. Yeah, Th this allows you to dial in that risk tolerance level that you would achieve via, you know, maybe it's a risk profile questionnaire. I know a lot of advisors um, you know, go through that with their clients. And so rather than looking back 20 years to say, okay, what was the historical volatility of a 60-40, 70-30 portfolio between stocks and bonds, you can really dial in that exposure and say, what, how much risk do you actually you know, want to take? How much risk are you comfortable taking over the next 12 months? And we can give you that exact 
risk amount that you were willing to take. So it's a it's a remarkably new way to think about risk management and to actually meet that checkbox that the client um, you know hopes to be getting over the next twelve months. You can really nail it as a financial advisor. Great. We'll have to leave it there, Matt, but thank you so much for joining us today and uh, congratulations on the success because I see that uh, CPSM, which is barely a month old, has already gathered more than 109 million in assets. So that is that is awesome. Great success. Thank you again for joining us and congratulations. I appreciate it. Thank you. That was Matt Kaufman of Calamos and the ETF is CPSM. M. This is, as he mentioned, first in the suite of 12 ETFs that will provide 100% downside protection. So you can visit their website, calamos.com, to learn more about this ETF and the upcoming ETFs. And Innovator Capital Management, uh, they also offer some ETFs that uh, provide 100% downside protection last year. In July, they had launched the world's first such EDF, and the ticker symbol of that EDF is TJUL, T-J-U-L. And uh, we had uh, Bruce Bond on the show then. If you want to learn more about Innovator's products, you can listen to that episode. They now offer two more such EDFs, AAPR and a Jan, A J A N. Thanks for listening. If you like our show, please leave us a rating on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. And also make sure to subscribe so that you do not miss any episode. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please email podcast at zax.com. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.